First off, I'm on a MacBook Air M1. It has 16 gigabytes of memory, a terabyte hard drive. And what I'm doing is comparing DaVinci 17 to DaVinci 18 on its rendering for the optical flow uh, speed warp. But I'm also comparing it against Final Cut Pro and After Effects to see who has the better, the smoothness in the video, and which one you would actually use. The surprising thing that I did find out was that the times for DaVinci Resolve 18, Beta 3, versus 17 was almost two, uh, almost three times faster on the rendering of Speed Warp. And I used that a lot, and it was really a pleasure to see that come into play. So, and this is on the M1 MacBook Air, 16 gigabytes of RAM, one terabyte hard drive. And this is the speed, which I am much more pleased with. So this is the clip. And she's hitting that. So there is a slight amount of motion blur in here. Now I put it at 5%. So <laughs> this is extremely slow. I will speed it up a little bit in certain areas here. And it was originally shot at 120 frames per second on a Blackmagic Design uh, Pocket 4K camera. But you can see everything through here is really impressive. This is always going to be a challenge for whenever there's that break in speed. But everything else is really smooth. Now, I'm recording this. <laughs> I'm running several different things, including recording a separate audio with Adobe Audition, and we have a uh, screen recording application. So if things are a little jittery, uh, it is because of that. But I'll tell you right off the bat, this is buttery smooth uh, normally. So we're going to go back to this area which is kind of important because now we're going to switch over to After Effects. And this right here you can already see. And we're looking at this area here in particular, that blurring. But there's also iteration differences. There are problems that come into play when we look back more uh, prevalent on some of the later shots. But again, every one of them makes that disappear. There's a little bit more blurring here. There were some other artifacts that I wanted to show that cropped up. And right here you can see it doesn't do a great job it's almost working uh, in a frame blend mode. And you can tell that by looking at where that thumb fades and disappears. And as a, as a frame blend, that's fine, but not for speed warp. And in After Effects, we, I use the pixel motion blur or pixel motion uh, optical flow. So I use the highest uh, settings on that. You can see even though it did the first iteration good of her first punch, the rest of it is, you know, starting to come into play where it's just a tad um, ugly looking. We get more of a frame blending situation. And this gets all choppy up in here. Again, we're looking at this, you know, a hole patching uh, type setup. So, otherwise, everything else is kind of smooth, but you can see it really falls apart here. We go back to uh, Da Vinci. Da Vinci's consistent. So, on its movement, so right there, it does a better job. It's not quite um, a frame blending, it blends 
with a smoother motion into it. And again, they all drop out about there because of her speed on that point. The motion blur and so forth on the original footage made that uh, occur. So now we're going to take a look at Final Cut Pro. Now Final Cut Pro, uh, well, you can see. <laughs> Final Cut Pro has a problem with it. Uh, it goes into the frame blending mode as well by the thumb. And again, you just watch in this area. You also watch here and here, there's iterations uh, that start appearing. It's like a wave pattern that comes across. And these are just like um, yeah, iterations that are, it's almost like it, it, it's fast because Final Cut Pro, of course, is Apple and it's working with the M1 devices really well. But when you get results that look like this, it doesn't matter if it's fast or not. Okay, we'll go to the second hit because that was also telling. And you can see everyone except Da Vinci, they, they do this really just terrible fade frame blending type immersion. And these are all optical flow. They should all be working really well, but, and look at this. I mean, you get even staggering frame blending here. It's really not, not pleasant. We're going back to After Effects on that shot. After Effects does the same rippling. Going back to Da Vinci. Da Vinci carries it through, and it's smoother. Uh, all around, it's it's smoother. The next one I did was one of the more challenging ones that you're going to get on anything where you have occlusions, where you have one object passing in front of the other, but also these are moving at such a speed, and there's a lot more motion blur on this. So you have, at times, very little data for the algorithms to um, create something out of nothing, basically. And so this is the motion sticks flying with the motion blur. Okay, And so they were all done, just so that you know, they're all done in uh, rendered, color graded, uh, pristinely in DaVinci Resolve first. And then they were all exported with um, 422 HQ. So. This is DaVinci. Remember, this is one of the most difficult things that they can have to process. These sticks, again, there's very little information, but you're gonna see some of them disappear, some of them just come out, where they should be here. Uh, but there's no information there, so it's doing the best it can. You will notice overall, and again, DaVinci does this uh, as uh, better than any of them, um, after Effects comes in second on the detail. Uh, Final Cut Pro uh, blurs this out a little bit, so it's not as sharp, especially in hair detail and so forth. So DaVinci works really well. After Effects is second, and uh, Final Cut Pro uh, needs a lot of work. So this is, again, movement. Overall, everything else is buttery smooth. But again, one of the more difficult things that you're going to come across. Okay, the next one we're going to go to is After Effects. So you can see uh, it's it's a mess. So there's it's swimming in water. You can see how the movement through here affects outside the boundaries. So if you look at uh, leading and trailing edges, uh, before and after the movement, you'll see this watery effect on everything that passes. Uh, the sticks pass over. And of course, it's it's having a hard time with this. Okay, so we're going to drop After Effects. I'm going to go to Final Cut Pro. Final Cut Pro, um, slightly better. Uh, it still has the leading and trailing edge, not as bad, 
well, un until you get to here. Uh, so you look at this motion again, leading and trailing edge from here along this length and along here in the foliage. You just watch that. You'll see that just kind of smear everything. And as well as, you know, all this hodgepodge that's going on in this area, it's really having a difficult time. And then we go back to, from this very clip, we look at Da Vinci here. I mean, it's, it's clean. Uh, you can see the stick itself, this faded frame uh, blend on da Vinci doesn't exist. The, you don't get this watery effect on the leading and trailing edges. And it doesn't disturb uh, the footage behind it. So the foliage itself is not disturbed. And again, my system is being bombarded because it's got a re screen recorder going, it's got uh, another program recording the audio separately and so forth, and OBS running in the background here. So this, again, it just does such a nice job comparatively. When you look at the other two, and we'll bring those down, After Effects, Again, just warps the hell out of everything. And then we go to Final Cut Pro. And again, just you know, all chopped up and warped. So uh, Final Cut Pro, um, fastest, but um, yeah, probably the worst. So it doesn't matter if it's fast, if it's no good. Uh, DaVinci Resolve, 18 is extremely fast, almost almost three times as fast as DaVinci uh, Resolve 17. And this is the studio version, by the way. Uh, we get that free when you buy one of their cameras. And it's very cheap. I mean, for the type of uh, system that you get uh, when you purchase it separately, I think it's around $250 or something like that. So if you were to if you were to buy it outright, that's uh, well worth the power that you get in this, including the speed warping and such. Uh, it does have a variation of the frame blending type thing, which is extremely fast. You can almost do it at, at full speed. Um, but again, it's more of a frame blending, which is the compromise that you're getting with Final Cut Pro. And After Effects kind of gets some things right, but again, Da Vinci is top dog in this uh, arena, or uh, top kitty cat, whichever animal you prefer. But that was something that I wanted to throw out there because speed warping and slow motion effects are some of the things that I do extensively with uh, my training and um, visualizations and so forth for my other channel. Uh, if you're interested in that, it's, uh, it's youtube.com slash core JKD. And so you'll see some of that. And otherwise, I hope this helped you. And if you have any questions regarding the software, uh, I am playing with the beta 3 version right now in DaVinci, and it's more stable than beta 2. Beta 2 have, it crashed on me a bit more, uh, and it had a little problem with, and I think we're still having a little bit of a problem with uh, rendering out. For some reason, when it renders out, um, the QuickTime file, ProRes or not, the file on the hard drive itself, uh, when you play in QuickTime, is, um, doesn't have the full uh, color grading. But you bring it into DaVinci Resolve, and it's, and it's even 17, DaVinci Resolve 17, and it's fully there. And then if you render it back out from that, you get the full um, color grading applied. So, Again, I hope that helps, and if you have any questions, let me know. Please thumbs up and subscribe uh, if you haven't. Thank you.